Let's get Eurified. This is gonna be a doozy. So another season is upon us. And you know what that means. I do my little happy dance and list out all the anime that'll hopefully make me even happier this season. So you know the drill by now. I talk about all the potential Yuri anime premiering this spring, give my unfiltered opinion on them, and you like and subscribe. Simple as that. And before I begin talking about the cavalcade of Yuri and Girls Club anime this season, I just want to preface that I don't have access to a crystal ball. So I can't definitively determine that each of these anime will be Yuri or have Yuri elements in them. I'm just giving it the old eyeball test and looking for obvious signs, like what percentage of the cast are female and how much skinship takes place between those females. I'm not Nostradamus, just a Yuri scientist. Anyway, let's get the ball rolling, shall we? Alrighty, no doubt this anime is on everyone's Yuri radar. It's Whisper Me a Love Song, another big Yuri manga we can cross off for the anime list. Basically a straight up Yuri romance, it focuses on teenage musician Asanagi Yuri, who was suddenly confessed to by an underclassman of hers named Kino Himari after hearing her and her band perform for a school concert. And at first, sweet little Yuri was taken aback by this sudden bombshell, but later decided to return her feelings to Himari. And just like any good rom-com, it turns out it was all a misunderstanding, and Himari was just confessed to her love of Yori's sick music skills, and not the music player herself. Big shock! Now the anime will follow the newly love-struck Yori as she tries to win the heart of her adorable underclassman, and plenty of wacky heart-thumping things will ensue. So I'm gonna be honest here, I think I read like the first couple of chapters of this manga a while ago, but never really continued it for whatever reason. I mean, I am quite familiar with Takashime Eiku's work, just more specifically the doujinshis. Regardless, the fact that this has been made to anime form means that my attention will not slip. I'm essentially going into the series blind now, since I don't remember much of what I read or what the overall tone of the manga is, although I think it was more light and fluffy. If I were to wager a guess, I'd say it's kind of close to Arachi and Shimamura levels of moe romance, but probably not as much introspection. I mean, Arashima is one of my favorite Yuri anime of all time, so if it's anything even remotely similar, you know I'm gonna be a happy camper. Speaking of happy, I'm also glad that they kept that unmistakable Takashima art style in the characters. Sometimes when manga makes the transition to anime, the designs and art style undergo a drastic change, and it's either hit or miss, but in this case it was a good decision to keep Takashima Eiku's beautiful art style present with the characters. After all, their style is kind of iconic in the Yuri world, like Namori's, or Nakatani Neos, or Flies, or Mina Karasunaos. Anyway, a pretty big anime to keep an eye on, so you bet your ass I'll be there with binoculars on day one, baby. So next up is actually my most anticipated anime of the season, believe it or not. It's Seiyu Radio no Uramote, aka the two sides of voice actor radio. Why is it so anticipated, you ask? Well, it stars two high school girls named Yugari Yuhi and Utatani Yasumi, and they're both classmates, voice actors, and hosts of a radio talk show. But here's the kicker. They got off on the worst possible foot and are now constantly staring daggers into each other despite having to maintain a happy-go-lucky relationship on air. Can you say romantic comedy? And if that's not enough, Yasumi is also a Gyaru, and Yuhi is a quiet loner. Can you also say chemistry? So just like Whisper Me a Love Song, I also read a couple of chapters on the manga a while back, but can't remember much. And to be honest, I also recall that it wasn't listed as full-blown Yuri anywhere, but more like subtext. However, my anime list does list it as girls love, and I'm inclined to believe the things that make me happier. So girls love it is. Anyway, if you watched any movie or TV show, you can pretty much guess how this anime will be structured. I just want to know what lovely heart racing moments these two will eventually share with each other. I suspect it'll be something like Citrus, except much more charming and much less melodramatic. But there'll definitely be some drama though, no doubt about that. Also, they do some idol stuff in the anime too, because as we all know, all voice actors double as idols. It's in their contract. So plenty of hype for this rival in the streets and eventually lovers in the sheets anime. I got a good feeling about this one. So I won't spend too much time with this next anime, since I'll largely be inaccessible to the wider population. It's Omro K, Dear Friends, Part 2 of the Yuri Yuri spin-off movie duology. So I briefly talked about Part 1 in my last Let's Talk Yuri video, and I can pretty much copy and paste everything I said for Part 2 as well. And no, I have not watched Dear Sisters. Just like the rest of the world, I'm still waiting for it to be translated. So as I'm currently stuck in the void, I can only guess what will happen in either movie. Like I said in the Winter 2024 video, I'm pretty sure it's just 
just gonna take random chapters from the manga and cluster them together into a 40 minute long episode. I doubt there will be much structure or plot. I mean, if you've seen the first movie, then by all means let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, I'll be happy just seeing these Yuri legends again, along with some brand new faces. Also, feel free to argue amongst yourselves in the comments about who Nanashiko's girlfriend is. But only the galaxy brain quadruple digit IQ among us will ever figure out who it is. And speaking as one of those, I can only say that my brain was absolutely blown out of my ass when I discovered that her girlfriend is. So the next few anime are complete shots in the dark. Maybe there's Yuri, maybe there's not. But hopefully they got a whole lot of charm to them. So first up is something called Yoru no Kurage wa Oyakanai, aka Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night. False. So I have no idea what this anime is about, and it doesn't help that I couldn't find an informative synopsis for it. Anyway, after watching the previews, I thought it was some kind of experimental anime. I mean, it still could be, given its artistic choices, but I think it's about a group of eccentric weirdos who meet and try to make it big together in the city of Shibuya. The four main characters also seem to be artists in some ways, and I assume they use their individual talents to work towards a common goal together, but must overcome many external and internal obstacles. Hey, I know a thing or two about TV shows. I most intrigued about the relationship between the brunette and the blonde though. Something tells me that they'll be getting the biggest spotlight, and they're also setting off my Yuri detector slightly, which is a good sign. And the show is being made by one of my favorite anime studios, Doga Kobo, which already means it's gonna be a certified good anime. So the next one on our list seems to be a pretty standard girls club anime. It's called Girls Band Cry. And if the title wasn't obvious enough, it's about a group of girls starting up a band and doing band stuff. Well, okay, it does seem to have an emphasis on drama and overcoming struggles. Kinda like Jellyfish, actually. So right off the bat, you can tell that this anime is entirely CG. Which, personally, I've always kind of been ambivalent on. I don't dislike CG anime or anything. Rather, I just prefer traditional 2D animation. Just cause it tends to be more snappy and versatile. Although I should point out the animation of GBC is clean as F. It makes sense when you find out that the studio behind it is Toei Animation. Yep, that Toei Animation. So I expect to see some One Piece and Dragon Ball references. Anyway, so what do I make of the characters? Well, they seem pretty cute and likable. Nothing that stands out in particular though. My one fear is that they might end up being carbon copies of Bang Dream or D4 DJ's cast. You know what I mean. So yeah, looking forward to learning more about these kooky characters and their adorable relationships. Now, it wouldn't be an anime season without some kind of random sports anime. I present to you Rinkai, a show all about lovely ladies participating in the high-octane world of women's cycling. I couldn't find a story to it, but I think we all know the drill by now. An ambitious young character dreams of making it to the top and showing everyone her amazing underdog abilities. But along the way, must defeat a slew of talented rivals. Same old, same old. But what we're really looking forward to is learning more about these cute and sexy ladies. And what's even better is that they're all very fit cute and sexy ladies, with mighty legs, and even mightier hot buns. And leading this beautiful ensemble are our two main characters, Ito Izumi and Hiratsuka Nana. No doubt total opposites too, and just like Seiyo Radio, expect some good stuff to come out of their rival relationship. Oh yeah, not much else to say, except hoping for plenty of sweaty training scenes. You can never have too much of those. Our next anime is by far the most mysterious of the bunch. It's called Shumatsu Train Dokoe Iku, aka Where is the Final Train Going? And the story seems to be about a group of girls setting off into what looks like a post-apocalyptic world via a disheveled train. Their goal is to locate some missing friends, and from the looks of it, they visit many different locations and experience many different wacky adventures. I'm actually quite fond of premises like this, where characters visit new locations every episode and encounter new obstacles. It keeps things fresh and exciting. Basically like flip flappers and other side picnic. But what's most important is how our adorable cast of characters will stack up. Well, they certainly look like a lot of fun, and I can already see the potential ships in my head. But we'll just have to wait and see if my intuition is correct. I mean, it's always correct, but I'm just so humble that I never let anyone bask in my amazing foresight. That's how much of a humble saint I am.
Now I'm just gonna barrel through the last few anime since I don't have a lot to say about them. But I am obligated to at least mention them due to their notoriety in Yuri's shipping circles. So the first one is of course Nijion Season 2, a delightful little spin-off to Love Life Nijikazaki, one of the greatest anime franchises of all time. So I was a little surprised this received a second season. I thought for sure they would just give it a single dose considering how light of a concept it was. But hey, I ain't gonna argue with seeing more of my favorite Love Live girls. This will also be a nice appetizer before the Nijikazaki films. Anyway, I suspect this will be more of what Season 1 gave us. Adorable, funny moments between the characters, and maybe some shipping moments sprinkled throughout. I've been at this long enough to know not to expect too much, especially for a spin-off project. So next is another totally not surprising Uma Musume anime. Is it me, or do I seem to talk about an Uma Musume project every f***ing season? Anyway, this time is different, you see, because this time we got a full-blown movie instead. Obviously, we'll be following another horse girl doing the usual horse girl thing. How's it gonna be different than a regular anime season? Fuck you, that's how. So yeah, if you're a big Uma Musume fan, you're definitely gonna like this. And if you're just a moderate fan like me, then at this point things start to become a little stale, and you can't seem to shake that feeling of apathy. Ah, but who gives a shit what I think? You like what you like, I suppose. Now the last three anime are totally outside of my knowledge range, so you can chastise me all you want in the comments. First up is Eurocamp Season 3, the slice of life anime all about camping in the great outdoors. At least I think that's what it's about. Yeah, I haven't watched the series, even though I'm pretty sure it'd be right up my alley. Relaxing settings, and cute girls doing cute things. What more can you ask for? I don't know, if someone can give me a more detailed pitch, then I'll definitely consider it. And if that pitch includes some Yuri, then I'll definitely be even more pleased. Next up is the mega franchise known as the Idol Master, Shiny Colors. Once again, I've heard of this series and seen plenty of fan art here and there, but just never took the plunge. Just like Love Live, I'm assuming Yuri ships pop up left and right like zits on a greasy TV. Teenager, but I don't know how committed they are. I mean, I've seen some not so pleasant things said online about some of the girls being pretty close to the male producers and stuff like that. And if that's the case, well, then that's the case. No skin off my nose, but most importantly, if it's a pretty standard idol anime franchise, then I don't know if it really deserves my time and attention at this point. Again, you can try to convince me if you want. So last up is the third installment to the Sound Euphonium franchise. Something about a group of girls playing in the Win Ensemble Club, and also going to a national competition or something. Yeah, that's right. Come and get me, bro. Now, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. The only things I've heard about this series are apparently the totally grating ship teases by Kyoto Animation, and something about some very controversial decisions that involve certain characters getting romantically involved with some other characters. That's all I know, I swear. And frankly, I don't even know if it's worth getting involved in all of this. As they say, ignorance is bliss. Well, yeah, if you're a fan of this series, then I'm happy you're getting another season. And from the looks of it, it appears to be the final season, too. So hopefully everyone gets a happy ending or something. And there we go. Lots of good stuff coming this spring. And I don't want to jinx anything, but it looks like 2024 is shaping up to be one of the gayest years ever. I mean, Christ, we already got a full-blown lesbian sex scene. When was the last time we saw one of those? It's gonna be hard to top, but I have full confidence this season will pull it off. Anyway, get hyped, Yuri fans. We're eating damn well this season.